Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, Additional Video, Number 2. This video should be viewed after the video on Natural Cubic Spline, Chapter 3.6. For Natural Cubic Spline, the additional two conditions we apply on, we call them the natural condition, they give us a cubic spline that is optimal in the sense of smoothness. In practice, however, there are other commonly used boundary conditions. And these conditions would lead to slightly different cubic splines. Although by those conditions we might lose that optimal smoothness um, advantages, but in many cases one would gain some other advantages. In this video, we will look at two of those commonly used conditions. The first one is called not and not condition. This condition was proposed by De Boer. So here, the additional two conditions we impose are the following. That is, the two polynomials to the left end of the interval shall be the same, as well as the two polynomials to the right end point. So in formula, this exactly requires that the polynomial S0 shall be identical to S1, that will be the left end, and the polynomial Sm minus 2 shall be identical to Sm minus 1. That will be the right end point. The advantage of using this boundary condition lies in the improvement of accuracy. One can show that by using this not a not condition it will actually yield an approximation of a fourth order. While when we use the natural cubic spline, one would only achieve a second order approximation. Now let's take a closer look at these conditions. Since we have S0 equals S1 identically, therefore the derivatives shall also be the same. In particular, the third derivative shall be the same for S0 and S1, and as well as for S-2 and S-1. Now we call that, we denote the second derivative of the cubic splines at the knots to be Zi. And then utilizing that, we can express the third derivative by this final difference. So we'll have this z1 minus z0 over h0 would be the s third derivative and z2 minus z1 over h1 will be the third derivative of s1 and they must equal each other and the similar thing for those two third derivatives gives us this final difference and this final difference and they equal each other so in fact since a cubic polynomial taking the third derivative of it will actually give a constant number. Therefore, the third derivative of S is a constant over each interval from Ti to Ti plus 1. Now these two exactly would give us the first and the last equations of uh, the system of equations that we're collecting. So rewrite this one, arranging it in order of the indexes z0, z1, and z2, and multiply by h0 times h1, and write it like that. Everything on the left-hand side, we get this linear equation. And a similar thing for this equation, give us another linear equation containing z and minus 2, z and minus 1, and z n as the unknown. Now, putting these two equations together with the 
of the equations for the inner knots, we get a linear system as we did for the natural cubic spline, h times z equal v. Here the system is slightly modified to contain two more unknowns because now z0 and zn they are unknown, so we collect them in the unknown vector and the v vector is also longer containing the first zero and the last zero. The coefficient matrix H here is almost tridiagonal and if we set it up and we see that it takes this form and um, this first row here comes from the first equation we um, represented earlier and the last row here would be the, the final equation that we represented there. We see that except for this term and this term here, if those shall be removed, then we would have a tridiagonal system. But due to their presence, this is not a tridiagonal, but almost tridiagonal. One can still solve it efficiently by Gaussian elimination. Now we consider a different boundary condition, which actually has quite some applications. This is called periodic boundary conditions, because in many physical phenomena we run into periodic behaviors and phenomena, and this condition would be useful. So we require that the boundary conditions are periodic, that is, um, at t0 and at t1, they are the same. So to be specific, in formula, we would have S0 evaluated t0 will be the same as the last polynomial Sn minus 1 evaluated at Tn. And as well as the first derivative of them and the second derivative of them. Then by using this condition here for the second derivative. Remember, they are denoted as z's, so we immediately have z0 equals zn. And we can also write out the first derivative for um, s0 and sn minus 1 by the formula that we already derived for cubic spline in terms of z's. Okay, they are um, repeated here in these two equations. Then, by the periodic condition, we can set the right-hand side of these two equations to be equal each other, in which we write here. And uh, we also reorganized the terms. We put everything containing z to the left-hand side, and everything that doesn't contain z to the right-hand side. And then we can also set c0 equals zn, and which would give us this equation. And now these two would serve as the first and the last equation in the system of linear equations that we collect for all the z's. So putting all the equations together, we again obtain a linear system and uh, the coefficient matrix H here now takes this form and uh, the first column will be collecting terms from the first equation and the last column are obtained by collecting terms from the last equation. And we see that this is again an almost 
symmetric and almost tridiagonal, except for this term and this term. Okay, so that's all for it. Thanks for watching.